Pinkerton's Ghosts is a horror anthology podcast by Superversive Radio, with no affiliation with any detective agency, person, real or imagined, or the dark forces of Outre Terre. It is not intended for children. This is Jim Donovan. It's currently 11 a.m. the Tuesday after Christmas. I'm in my in-home office getting some tax documents ready. Well, it's tiresome and cliched at this point to say it, but I'd rather fight the outra terror than get audited. After I solved the siren in the subcase, I visited my parents. I told them everything. I told them about Hawkwood. I explained what happened to my bro- To John. To do that, I had to show them that, yes, magic is real. It's not just a scam perpetrated by the Disney Corporation. I showed them the Soul Stone, but I did not tell them about all the people that had died in order to fuel it. I even told them about the Loki incident, but minimized the part they played in it. I don't want to scare them. They were oddly okay with everything. Yeah, Mom cried a lot and Dad asked some questions, but overall they were their usual supportive selves. They deserve better. Of course, then Sean interrupted my visit by asking me to help him find his evil alternate universe clone and the absolute rank amateur magician Alexander the Great. <sighs> Saying that aloud, I realize just how ludicrous my life is these days. Evil Sean has an eye patch. An eye patch! All he's missing is the goatee. Anyway, while we were chasing them down and safeguarding the heart of Kronos, I had the unique opportunity to look into the heart. The time waves that the clockwork cognomen weirdos throw up displays images of the past and future. They dictate the time and dates that the weird little gizmo would be taken in and out of the church. I can't really describe it because it defies description. It's as though it was constantly moving in time while staying physically in the same place. Every second I held it in my sight, I was holding equally the past, present, and future. Kind of daunting discovering what eternity feels like. There's a lot more I could learn from that gadget, but unfortunately I couldn't get my hands on it. I'll see about making a road trip back to it one of these days. Those clockwork cog nerds don't have anything on me. Anyway, I figured I'd better get this message sent off while I'm still thinking about it. This is Jim Donovan. The time is 3 p.m. It is the Wednesday after Christmas, and I'm in my home doing laundry. Couldn't sleep at all last night. There's this new mosquito that's found its way into my apartment, and I can't seem to move fast enough to swat the damn thing. Right when I'd start to fall asleep, I'd hear that high-pitched in my ears that skeeters always seem to make. Plus, my feet started itching something fierce. I think it must be drinking me while I sit at my desk. Anyway, I'm writing this to report that my contacts have been noticing an uptick in kidnappings of newborns. In each case, the kid is found less than an hour after the disappearance is called in, so there hasn't been an official task force set up, or much dedicated in the way of manpower to get to the bottom of things. The official position is that some babies start crawling sooner than parents expect, and they just get lost while mom and dad aren't watching. No chance. I suspect the Fae may be behind it, and that the found children aren't humans, but are in fact changelings. There's an old Scottish myth that says that the Fae owe a tithe to hell, and so in order to fulfill the demand, they exchange a human baby with one of their own, and then give the human child to the demons. For what purpose, I don't know, but it's surely not wholesome. Is it possible? Yeah, sure. I've seen the Otra Terra do some weird things in my time. Can't imagine why the demons and devils of hell collect anything from the Fae, much less children. You'd think they wouldn't care about creatures that are already willfully damned. I wrote up my suspicions, as well as some possible solutions, and I sent them to my contact at LAPD, Officer Stephen Ha. He's a good guy. A little green, but he's solid. Oh, I found out my next-door neighbor, uh, the one that nearly died thanks to that stupid brownie, is named Liz. She's a nanny when she isn't an actress. Nice girl. Glad she got rid of that stupid cat. This is Jim Donovan. Time is 4 a.m. Wednesday night. Couldn't get to sleep. I was hearing things. Or, rather, I'd just start to drift off to sleep 
and then I'd hear a woman's voice say my name, and I'd bolt awake. No one was in the room. I went into the Verum Vicio. There was no ghost or demon in my room either. It was totally empty. I tried going back in time to the Vicio to see if something had been in my room, and then left when I woke up, but I was too tired to focus my eyesight that deeply. That's probably for the best, anyway. After the third or fourth time this happened, I decided to get up, do a little work. I might go back to sleep later this morning. I had another theory while I was in the shower today, that the Fae are using the shipping container vessels stuck in the Los Angeles Harbor to smuggle kidnapped children to China, where they'll be used in computer chip sweatshops and organ farms. It's not that far-fetched, Control. It at least makes more sense than interpreting an old Scottish myth about tithes to hell as an actual fact. With Otra Terre, as with normal life, Occam's razor applies. I'm going to stretch my legs out a bit first. Go for a few mile walk. That should have shaked the sleep out of me. It did not. Okay, it's currently 10 p.m. Sitting in my office, staring at my computer screen, all but unable to move. I think I have the flu control or the virus that shall not be named. Can't work up enough energy to do anything. I'm too tired to sleep. My body hurts too much to do anything else. That mosquito is currently buzzing, but I'm too slow to swat it. I keep slapping my own face. I'll just hear the right by my ear, or feel the prick of pain as that proboscis bites into my unguarded flesh. It's getting really annoying. I'm going to order some mosquito traps on Amazon. Get the one-day delivery so I'll get here tomorrow. Yeah, uh, correction. I'll get here Friday. After I went for that walk earlier this morning, I found myself going over all the details in the kidnapping cases that Stephen had given me. Five cases, all with newborns, all less than six weeks old. Each child was Caucasian. Each family was of Western European origin. I'd have to get a blood sample to see how strong the Gaelic roots are in each family, but you know, I suspect this could be more than just your routine changeling and is instead a case of the Fae settling old debts. You know, sins of the father, that sort of thing. Lizzie came in while I was recording this. She sat up on her hind legs and asked me how my day was. <laughs> I shook my head a bit and looked at her. She was on all fours like normal, not talking. Gotta get some sleep control. I'm starting to hallucinate. <laughs> oh, hey. Uh, I just realized... My next-door neighbor has the same name as my lizard. That's weird. It's, um... It's 5 a.m. control. I think I'm going to stop trying to sleep until those mosquito traps arrive. As it is, the buzzing is keeping me awake all night. My legs are covered in welts. Couple that with the flu I have, and I am not doing well. I tried to get some work done, but once I started linking the various kidnapping cases, all I kept coming back to was the heart of Kronos and the manipulation of time. So Einstein said that time is a physical reality that can be manipulated just like all the other physical media. We see that time is affected by gravity, as evidenced by black holes, which are so dense that light can't escape. The stronger the pull of gravity, the more stretched out time becomes relative to the rest of the universe. So while time within the gravitational pull proceeds as normal, the rest of the universe passes an immeasurably long period of time. Or so goes the theory. Obviously, no one has been inside a black hole to find out. So the best of my understanding, with the heart of Kronos, I can create a sort of localized black hole that can be used to manipulate and affect the passing of time around me. The implications of this are absolutely wild. With this, for all I know, Sean wasn't lying about the time he went back in time to save George Washington. 
But when I say that out loud, it still sounds really stupid. I don't think I can do this on my own, with just the Soul Stone. From everything I have seen, the Soul Stone works on the three traditional dimensions of matter, and then kind of bypasses the fourth dimension of time, and goes straight into the dimension of souls and spirits. It is always in the present, but not past or future, even though it does kind of allow me to see the past and not the future. I actually never tried using it to see the future. I don't really want to experiment with that just in case. Now, I don't think you can manipulate time in reverse. I mean, that makes no logical sense. The past is quite literally dead. It will self-correct to the true reality. But what if you can make an impact? What if, for time to be reversed, even locally, you need to hold the heart of Kronos, not just a piece of it? How far back can you go? Can you, for instance, bring back someone who is dead? Would that require just the stone, or would you also need to have the person's soul handy? And would that be, like, coupled with the soul stone? So, heart of Kronos and soul stone? I mean, souls are harvested at death, so I just have to be there at the end. With the heart of Kronos, could I reverse John's current state as a ghoul? Was that why Sean's doppelganger and Alexander the Great were searching for the heart? I don't know. <laughs> I'm rambling here, Control. I don't think it's a good idea to make grand plans when I have this little sleep. My inhibitions are lowered and my ability to reason is pretty much nuked. Like this mosquito will be if I can ever figure out how to manipulate strong nuclear forces. I just need to figure out the connection between this stuff and gravity. I'll bet the heart could make it so that mosquito was never born. Just need to track down its grandfather. Hey, Sean, how's it going? Good. No, I'm good. I'm not sleeping well, but other than that, doing all right. What? No, you called me. I did? Weird. Well, I guess I did want to ask you something. Do you remember when we went to Illinois... You left me for a while to hang out with your clone while I had to stop that one amateur magician from juggling the entire space-time continuum. I've been having nightmares about that incident for a week now, and I gotta say, it's not cool how you basically ignored my whole contribution in that report to Control. Yeah, I don't know, but here's the thing, Sean. Magic and the Verinvisio don't work like you described, and so you gave everyone who hears that little report the wrong impression of what I do. Magic is not some switch that you can flip on and off, Sean. It's like, it's a river where if you're very, very lucky and exceedingly careful and prepared, you won't get yourself drowned every time you dip your stupid toe in it. The Soul Stone is the only reason my mind doesn't shatter every time I peer into the realms between realms. If it weren't for that thing protecting my little mind palace, I'd be both as crazy as Alexander the Great but also as incompetent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know about the Necromancer cult, all right? I figure they can get away with not having a soul stone because of how they harness the power of creation to undo death. By working at a right angle to the natural order of things, they kind of protect themselves by erecting a barrier that both protects their mind while damning their souls. Right, yeah, exactly. Well, okay, it's, it's more like using a diving bell going into an oceanic abyss with no rescue line. Oh, hey, um, I meant to mention this to you earlier. Never had the chance. Don't get too attached to Violet, all right? Look, she's great and all. Don't get me wrong. But if there's one thing I've learned working in this business, if she's not going to betray you to the forces of Otra Terre, then she's going to die on you. And the closer you get to her, the more either of those outcomes are just going to hurt. No, I'm not talking out of my ass. It's happened to all of us. You think old Tom had any stable relationships? You think Jack does? <laughs> you think Jack meets any definition of stable? We're out here fighting evil, Sean. There's no way that doesn't corrupt a man. 
And there's no way in heaven, earth, or hell that you can keep doing what we do and not have that ruin every attempt at a loving, healthy relationship. No, the longer you stay here, the more likely you are to ruin her life. The best thing you can do right now is break up with her in a way that makes her think it was her idea all along so that she doesn't get some sort of suicidal notion that as long as she can tough it out, you two can handle what the ultra terror can throw at you. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Look, it's been really crazy around here the last few days. I've had this mosquito buzzing around and waking me up. I've been seeing and hearing things. The other day, my pet lizard started talking to me. I don't even know what's real anymore. You good, Sean? 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 <sighs> uh, I realized that I had turned on the record and send function on my phone. Sorry, you had to hear all that control. And, Sean, I'm real sorry that conversation got leaked to everybody. I don't think you're a bad guy. I just think that your relationship with Lola is dangerous to both you and her. Uh, I mean Violet. Whatever her name is. Time is 6 p.m. I am standing outside my apartment, locked outside of my apartment. I went on a walk and forgot my keys. And now it's raining. Perfect. I went outside to try and clear my head. My office slash apartment had gotten too cramped. I just can't think anymore. But now when I walk around outside, I can't keep all my thoughts inside my head. I have to blurt them out to try to make sense of them. While I was walking, a police car came up behind me and flashed its lights and siren once to get me to stop. I think someone had called him, worried I was publicly drunk and about to hurt someone. I must have been thinking about something important, because the second I heard the noise behind me, I shifted into the Verum Vicio and superheated the tires on the police car so that the air expanded inside of them, and all four tires exploded. The cop hopped out of the car and drew his taser on me. Started running and got away. All the body armor they wear really drags him down, so even I could run fast enough to get away. Even as tired as I am. <laughs> when I got a few blocks away, I noticed a couple leads on my jacket. But the wards that I have woven in there must protect me from the electric shock. I think a mosquito followed me outside. I can hear it now. What started out as irritating has become... Kind of peaceful. Can't imagine being able to think without the drone of a mosquito bumping its way into my thoughts, sucking them dry. From here on out, Control, I'm I'm just going to stop worrying about sleeping. It's really not that important anyway. Hawkwood had some tricks. Oh! Hey! I can use the Verum Vistio to pick my lock. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I need to find a way to magic-proof my house so that no one else can do what I'm about to do. I think I'm gonna... Wait. How'd I get inside? I was just walking. Why aren't I soaking wet? It was raining outside. Oh. I don't have the energy to do much beyond hit the button. I'm lying here, on the floor. The mosquito buzzing is constant. It's loud. Oh, it's so loud. I can't hear my own thoughts. I can't hear myself speak. I'm surprised you can't hear it pick up on the microphone. Everything has become the mosquito. Everything is the mosquito. The floor is the mosquito. Lizzie is the mosquito. I am the mosquito. I'm gonna slip into the Vicio. 
See if I can understand what's going on. I see. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. Feeding on mosquitoes. Feeding on mosquitoes. It doesn't matter where I look. Their eyes follow me. They want to suck me dry even as they suck all reality dry. I need to see more. More! I am the master of the Verum Visio. I must see deeper. The infinite floor of the cosmos. The dark sea God moved over before creation. I can see forward into eternity. I can see... No. It writhes. It's a mass of flesh devouring itself. <laughs> it's mosquitoes all the way down. <laughs> Pinkerton's Ghosts is a podcast distributed by Superversive Radio, a license under an attribution non-commercial, share-alike international license. This episode was written by Ken Dickerson and performed by the same. Ben Wheeler edits, directs, produces, and herds cats. Ken Dickerson performs our audio editing. Visit us on Facebook, read articles on superversivesf.com, or listen to us on unauthorized, Acast, iTunes, or Spotify. Contact us through Twitter at AdPinkertonsGhosts, email us at PinkertonsGhosts at gmail.com, or send us noble messenger possums with messages strapped to their backs. Don't worry, they know how to find us. Thank you for listening, and good luck. <laughs>